Hello, students, and welcome back to Bunsen Burners. And today, we're going to light up our burners. So we're going to go through the steps on how to achieve that successfully. So let's get right to it, shall we? First, oops, first, let me get back to the right page here. There we go. First thing we're going to do is review the parts of the Bunsen burner. So I'm gonna give you a little quiz right now. I'm gonna hold the burner in front of the screen here and I am going to point to a various part of the burner and I want you all to call out what is the name of the part of the burner. So let's begin with this. Very good. Next, this. Okay, this part. This part that rotates back and forth. The openings. And finally, the little structure inside with a hole in it. Let's see how you did. So we've got the barrel on the top. We've got the barrel on the top. Collar is the, uh, the metal sleeve that rotates around. The openings are the air intake, and inside is the structure called the spud. On the bottom, we have the gas valve that turns, and on the very bottom, we have the base. The only part I didn't show you was this part here, the gas tubing that connects to the bottom of the burner, which I will do for you right now. So the gas tubing is now connected to the burner. So let's move now to the proper steps for lighting the Bunsen burner. We begin with step one. Step one, we familiarize ourselves with the parts of the Bunsen burner before you go on to the next step. That's what we were just doing. I was quizzing you there as to the various parts of the Bunsen burner, and hopefully you did very well. And if there were any parts that you were not familiar with, don't go on until you are familiar with them. So go back to your diagram, go back to the Bunsen burner, and quiz yourself and quiz your lab partner until you have it down perfectly. Because once you do have it down perfectly, then we can go on to step two, which is the first step in lighting the actual Bunsen burner. And whenever in lab, I say the key words, get ready. I am referring to step two here. So you might want to put a box around, uh, put a circle around, underline the two words, get ready here next to step number two. Because when I say get ready, it means two things. First, you select a safety person to operate the jet and a burner person to operate the burner. Normally speaking, in, uh, in science lab, you will always have a minimum of two people operating at the table with a functioning Bunsen burner. Uh, we always want a safety net in place. So the safety person operates the jet, the gas jet, which I'll show you in a moment here, and the burner person to operate the Bunsen burner itself. So when I say get ready, it means select those two individuals from your group, you and your partner. You decide who's going to be the safety person, who's going to be the burner person. And normally during lab, uh, from one week to the next, we would rotate the positions so that not the same person is doing the same thing all the time, but rather you all have the opportunity to do everything. 
So safety person operates the jet. What exactly does that mean? Well, I'm gonna show you a little video clip here of the part on the lab station called the gas jet. And the gas jet is the, uh, the part with the handle that I'm pointing to here. And I want you to notice its orientation. It's either perpendicular or parallel to the jet. When it is perpendicular, it's off. When it's parallel, it's on. Perpendicular off, parallel is on, perpendicular off. So I'm gonna show this to you again. I want you to notice the orientation of the handle to the jet. If it's parallel, if the handle and the jet are parallel, it's on. If the handle and the jet are perpendicular, it's off. So as I move the handle through the different positions, I want you to yell out on or off. So here we go, we're gonna watch it again. Are the handles on or off right now, everybody? Now? 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 Now, hopefully you caught that because it's not your typical handle like a faucet handle where it's righty tighty lefty loosey. It doesn't work that way with the gas jet. So before we actually begin, you're going to become familiar with how to operate the gas jet with the handle in terms of parallel and perpendicular. Remember, parallel is like this, perpendicular is like this. So a little bit of geometry here can save your life in lab uh, during uh, science class. So parallel is on, perpendicular is off. So again, that is step two. Step two, select the safety person and a burner person. Next step, very, very, all of these steps are very important, but here's another very important step. Step three is check the system. When we check the system, there are two key words that I've underlined here, tight and closed. You need to check the tightness of the gas tube connections, and you need to check to make sure that the valve is closed the jet is closed, and the collar is closed. All of these things. So let's begin with the tightness of the gas tube. As I showed you earlier, the gas tubing connects to two things. On one end, the gas tubing connects to the Bunsen burner. And as I rotate this and pull apart, you'll see that the burner has little ridges in it that connect to the gas tubing to create a nice seal. When you're checking the system, you wanna make sure that the gas tubing is not easily removed from the Bunsen burner, because if it is, well, gas will spew all over the place and you'll have a fireball on your face. That would be bad. So check the tightness on this end. The other end of the gas tubing has a label on it and the other end of the gas tubing is to be connected to the gas jet, which we just were looking at a moment ago. Uh, the gas jet has a connection that looks exactly like this, and you connect the gas tubing in exactly the same way to the gas jet. So the first part of step three is to make sure that the gas tube is tightly fit on both ends. And to do that, you give a gentle tug. If it doesn't move, it's tight enough. If it does move, tighten it. The other key word here in step three is closed. You wanna make sure that everything is closed. So the gas valve on the burner, is it closed? Now remember the gas valve is righty tighty lefty loosey. So turning it clockwise all the way closes the gas valve. Turning it left or counterclockwise opens it. 
So take a moment and rotate back and forth. And when the gas valve stops turning, you should stop turning it because you don't want to strip the threads. And it's like a little screw here. You don't want to strip the threads of the gas valve because if you do, then gas will be leaking out of the gas valve when it's in use. And that would be a bad thing. Okay, so make sure the valve is closed. Make sure the jet is closed. Remember the gas jet is where the other end of this gas tubing is. And you know the off position or the closed position is perpendicular, perpendicular. The handle should be perpendicular to the jet in order for it to be closed. And finally, the next thing that should be checked is the collar. The collar should also be closed. And what does that mean? Well, if you rotate the collar, there are points where you see the air intake and you can see right through it. But if you rotate the collar, you can close the air intake. You wanna make sure that to begin, you close the air intake. So what that means is step three, is everything tight and closed? You gotta make sure you do that before you go on to the next step. And the next step is step four. And when we're all in the lab, I will say, when we're all at this point, I will say system on. When I say system on, it is the safety person's job to rotate or, or you know, move the gas jet to the on position. That is in the parallel position. So that the handle and the jet are parallel to one another. As soon as you do that, you now have gas running through the gas tubing from the gas jet all the way to the Bunsen burner, and it will stop here until you quickly go on to the next step. And the next step, which is step five, is to light the burner. Let me talk you through this. To light the burner, you're going to be doing a couple of things. First, you're going to open the gas valve. And to open the gas valve, you simply turn one full turn. If you turn it more than one full turn, you're gonna start seeing that rubber O-ring exposed. That would be bad. You don't wanna see the rubber O-ring. So if you've turned it so far, turn it back a little bit. You don't wanna see that rubber O-ring because that rubber O-ring is preventing the gas from coming from the gas tube right out to where your fingers are on the other side of the gas valve. And if you take that gas valve off too much, well, that gas is gonna come right out to you and you may have a fireball in your hand and that would be bad. So you open the valve only one full turn. As soon as you've done that, you now have allowed the gas to start coming up the barrel. And even though it's invisible, that gas is coming out the barrel of your burner. So you immediately then take your striker and your striker is a flint on a strike plate that when you squeeze the handle, you will see a spark is formed. And it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up to its glowing. So you, you gotta be careful, but you're gonna practice this before you need to. You wanna be sure that when you squeeze the striker, you have a spark. But <laughs> when you're lighting it is not the time to practice. You're gonna practice beforehand. Because right now, if we're at step five, You've got the gas valve open, you've got gas coming out the barrel, and you're gonna hold the striker a couple of centimeters above the barrel at a slight angle, and you're gonna squeeze because that one spark will be enough to ignite the gas coming out of the barrel, 
and you're going to have a lit Bunsen burner in front of you. Now, pay attention to this note. If the flame does not light after several tries, and you will smell the gas because there has been a chemical added to this gas, this propane, so that you can smell it if something's going wrong. You immediately close the gas valve and the jet and return to step three. So maybe there's something wrong with the striker. Maybe there's something wrong with your hand. Maybe there's something else wrong at your station. But when you have uh, the system on, step four, and you've got propane pouring through the barrel of your burner, and you don't get it lit, then you have a massive bubble of propane gas building up on your lab station. And if you don't light it quickly, and another lab station does, you may have a fireball at your table, and guess what? That would be bad. So you immediately close the gas valve, righty tighty, and you close the gas jet. So the burner person closes the valve, the safety person closes the jet. And you immediately go back to step three. And do you remember what step three is, everybody? Check the system. Make sure everything is tight and closed. Now, let's say you've got to step five and you were able to achieve success. And so you were able to light your burner. Fantastic. You're not over yet. Because when you've lit your burner while everything is still closed, including your collar, then you will have produced a bad flame, as we talked about yesterday. A bad flame will be that, that bright yellow flame, an inefficient flame, not as hot, hot enough to burn yourself, but not hot enough to do some of our experiments. So step six will be to adjust your flame. And to adjust your flame in order to obtain a good flame, you're going to rotate the collar. You're going to adjust the collar. And when you rotate your collar, you're going to expose that air intake, allowing more oxygen to mix with the fuel, and that is what will produce a good flame. So step six, adjust the flame, and that will give you a good flame. Remember, a good flame it looks like this, Bad flame looks like this. And when we all get them lit, we will practice an experiment going back and forth between a bad flame and a good flame until you feel comfortable doing that. Because let, let me tell you something, and please trust me on this. All of the heat of the Bunsen burner is above the barrel. When you are the burner person and you are rotating the collar, you don't have to touch it like this, afraid that it's hot, because it's not. The collar is not going to be hot. So don't tap it thinking it's going to be hot and be afraid of it, because you could knock down the whole burner and create a flamethrower toward your lab partner, and guess what? That would be bad. So you don't want to do that. You can grab a hold of your collar and rotate it without fear of getting burned. Believe me, I wouldn't tell you to do it if it weren't true. So by now, we will be at step seven uh, for the Bunsen burner activity. I'll simply be instructing you on how to go back and forth between a good flame and a bad flame until we feel comfortable. But in the future, when we use the Bunsen burner to perform lab activities... Well, you'll need to follow my instructions in order to perform whatever experiment it might be. Because when we have a good flame, chances are you're going to be instructed to insert something into the good flame at the tip of the light blue portion of the flame. Because that point right there is the hottest part 
of the flame. In either case, you follow the teacher's instructions. And that brings us to the next step, which is the proper way of shutting down your burner. You don't want to do this willy-nilly without knowing what you're doing because you could get burned by a backfiring. So here is the proper technique for shutting down your burner. First, uh, the collar should be closed. When you close the collar, you will get a bad flame. It'll be a yellow flame. That's okay at this point when we are shutting down your burner. So the first thing you do is to close the collar. Then back your hands away from the burner, burner person, in order to avoid getting burned from any backfiring that might take place if you didn't close the collar. So you close the collar, move your hands away. Then the safety person, the safety person will close the gas jet. And remember how to close the gas jet. Is it parallel or perpendicular? It's perpendicular. So you'll close the gas jet by making sure the handle is perpendicular to the hose. Wait a moment because you will notice the flame burning out into the barrel and only after the entire flame has been extinguished should the burner person then close the gas valve and then allow the burner to cool down before you disassemble everything. So turning on the Bunsen burner and turning off the Bunsen burner following the correct procedure is just as important as one another. So again, proper shutdown techniques, you close the collar first, then close the gas jet, then close the gas valve, let it cool, disassemble, and put it away. So now I'm going to show you a video of the entire process. Of course, I'm doing it myself. Normally, you'd have a safety person at the gas jet and the burner person at the burner. But notice all of the steps that I will be following here from start to finish. So we come to the table, and normally two people minimum. Goggles first, to make sure you're wearing your goggles before you even go to the table. Now we're familiar, familiarizing ourselves with the burner, which we have done. Now we check to make sure everything is tight and closed tight on both sides, make sure the valve is closed, the collar is closed, and the jet is closed. Good job. Now we get the striker ready and within reach, and we go to the next step, which is system on. At this point, the gas is flowing through the burner. We have just gone to light the burner. The gas valve was opened, and the striker was placed over the barrel. Now we're adjusting the flame by rotating the collar to get more oxygen. So here's a good flame. Rotate the collar again. We have a bad flame. And by the way, when we go to a good flame, you will actually hear the roar of the flame. It makes a sound. Now notice also the top of the light blue flame. That is where the hottest part of the flame is. Here's how we shut it down. We close the collar, gas jet, wait, and then the gas valve, and we're all done. So those were very simply all of the steps of lighting the Bunsen burner from start to finish. And so now is your time to study those steps. Review the video. You want to be so sure that you know exactly what you're doing, what everything is called, and in what order you are doing things. Because if any one of these steps are done out of order, well, bad things could happen and that would be bad. So we don't want any bad things happening in the laboratory when using Bunsen burners. 
We want only good things happening when using Bunsen burners because we'll be able to see a lot of really cool experiments by utilizing the Bunsen burner safely. So review, study, and reinforce the content. Uh, and so until next time, I will say bye-bye.